Hello and welcome to Studio Cloud's tutorial on how to use the calendar. Just as a reminder, uh, please refer to our written tutorials if you see anything different in the video tutorials than what is in your Studio Cloud program. Uh, we always keep the uh, uh, written tutorials up to date, whereas the video tutorials um, take a little bit longer to update. Um, right now, here's the uh, view of the calendar and uh, the graphical calendar. And we're, these right here, this is the all day appointment. Here's different appointments, and these are uh, have their different colors. Let's go ahead and uh, zoom in on a day here. Um, you can use the wheel on your mouse if you have one to uh, scroll up and down on the day. And to, to create an appointment, um, all you do is you can click and drag. When the program opens at the new event window, you have the option here of selecting between different session types. These are the default ones. You can set up your own. Uh, these are fully customizable. And to set, the, set, up, set up these session types, all you do is come here to the calendar, the, the calendar settings tab and click on the manage calendar types or manage sub calendar types. So let's go ahead and go in there. These are currently calendar types right there and these are the color of the appointments and the, uh, if you edit it you can change those uh, colors. Here you have, um, and then you also have actions that you can do if you want to when you save the uh, appointments so you can have it send emails when it, uh, to an employee or to a client if you want to. And then you have the default length in minutes. Now this one right here causes a little bit of confusion because when you come in here, that, um, that appointment we have is set for 30 minutes. But when you come in here and open this up, it it shows you the time that you had selected, which is an hour. You have two options. You can click the use default appointments, and then uh, when you switch, it will automatically adjust it to the time of that. If you always wanted to do this, in other words you do not want it to, to register the drag and, and the length based upon that, but you just want it to always be uh, by default whatever the length of the session type is, then you need to come into the manage calendar options and this one enable auto select default time frame for calendar. Um, this will make sure that when you no matter what you select you'll always use that default time for the session type. That does mean that you can select the session type um, here and then come down here and override it, but it just means that these are the session, the calendar type, and the calendar subtype um, are essentially are, are by default. Um, they override everything else. Uh, to with this new event window, you can create new clients right from this window, and you can also add clients that you've already previously uh, created by by either double clicking or drag and dropping. Um, you have your event name and this is what appears on the event in the calendar. You have your notes. You can change the, the event color but it also depending on your um, calendar type, see how it changed right there, it will, it can, you can have it change it as well so you don't really need to do it. If you want an all day event, this right up here is an all day event. You can select that. Uh, you can select whether the appointment's confirmed or not. You can also track it based upon marketing campaign if you want to. Uh, you can also create multiple events and uh, this is the options you can go through and, and create. I want this event created multiple times. Over here, these options are only available for the uh, um, employee boost um, and the partner boost um, and this is where you book employees for an event and equipment and locations. Um, in addition, you can add in additional notes here, event details and the address for that if it's if you want to have it recorded right there. You can get directions to this event. You can view the, the event location on Google Maps. From this window you can also create an invoice. A lot of times people will have a customer call in over the phone. They'll go and find. So let's actually walk through this whole process. Uh, we'll save this. And we're going to double book a client. And, uh, and uh, we have a client that's also in this all day event, uh, sorry, an employee. So we have an employee up here, and so we just double booked that employee, and it, it warned us about that. When you're, so what you're going to do is you're going to have a customer call up over the phone, and they're going to say, hey, I want an appointment, and uh, I want to schedule a, a session with you. And you'll find, you, you can look through the calendar view here, find open spots, and uh, click on it to book it. And then at that point, after you confirmed you have a spot for them, oftentimes you'll uh, go in here and create the new client here and enter their information over the phone. Or you can, um, as I mentioned previously, just drag and drop it for this example, do that. 
And then from this window, you can go down here, create. And so after they booked everything, um, you can create an invoice directly from the event, uh, which you would do if you're going to have to do a like a, a down payment, or there's a session fee or something like that. You can just create the event. You can create the invoice directly from the event. What that did is it assigned the session um, to this invoice as well as a client, so that you can see that uh, there's a client right there. Um, and then uh, you go through the process of doing an, an invoice, which is a different video tutorial. Now let's go ahead and go back to the uh, edit um, the new event window. Uh, we also have a few other options here. Print. You can print this event out. This will open it in a browser. You can print it directly to a Dynamo printer. That's what you do if you want to do labels, uh, stickers, and stuff like that. You can send emails to a client directly from this window. So you have this option of sending emails to a client here. And you also have this option of sending the emails to the client from this window as well. If you have the calendar type set up uh, with a default action, then it, then this would be uh, pre-selected. Um, we don't have one in this instance, but it would pre when you select the calendar type, it would pre-select whatever you had as the default for the calendar types with the correct email template that you'd want sent out. And so when you click the Save button, it just automatically send it out. The option down here to send the email, this will open up the email window and you'll have to go through the process. And so this one just streamlines it, streamlines it so it's one complete process. Under the more actions, you can generate a document or a contract from the details of this uh, event. And uh, sometimes people uh, want to have folders pre-created to store files or images um, for an event. And so that button right there will pre-create folders in your, in your desktop for an event. Let's go ahead and edit a session. Now some of the things that are different between the, the new session and the edit session is we no longer have that notify option. That's only when you create a new session. And then here uh, we have invoices, which in this example we don't. But this would, this would uh, list out the invoices right here. And it also, if you wanted to, you could list out the uh, file storage that's attached to this uh, event, um, which in this instance we don't have any attached to it. Now looking at this view right here, we have a week view, we have a work week view, that's Monday to Friday, we have a month view, and uh, we also have a day view as well. We have an option up here to filter by calendar types. Let's go ahead and go to the month view. And we're, this will only show what you set up for the calendar filter to do. So in this instance, we don't. Jane's not booked at all, but John is booked for these two appointments. Uh, calendar filters are really powerful because you can also, uh, let's come into here, new filter. You can also um, select uh, specific configurations. So if you wanted to look at certain types of uh, session types, you could do it here. If you wanted to just view certain employees or a combination of them, so you want to see John Doe when he's booked for a, uh, a wedding uh, reception, you can do it there. If you want to do it based upon location, so you want to see John Doe when he's booked for a wedding uh, at the garden, you can do it there. So you can do any, any combination. Um, and you can just select all if you wanted to see everything or whatnot for that. Select it all right there, so just speed things up. But once you've done that, you can export that out to ICS, which is really useful because if you have a bunch of employees, you can create a, a different filter for each one, and you can then send them um, their link for their filter, and, and they can copy and paste that into their phone or their iCal or Outlook program, and that means that they'll be able to see just their schedule, and it will automatically be updated for them. Uh, this does require the partner boost uh, or the employee boost. Uh, I'm sorry, this, I misspoke. This calendar filter does require the employee boost. And then we have uh, uh, the ability to import um, uh, ICS feeds. You just click on here and you click import, and it gives you different options to import the calendar in here. And I'll show you the thing, the uh, different events, and you can click save and import them into your calendar. Uh, we also have the option to export this calendar, and you uh, typically have to come when you come in here. It looks like this. You have to enable it. And then you either copy and paste this link into a program on your computer or you email it to you. Uh, down here, you can change the number of appointments. <coughs> right now, by default, it's set to 150. You could increase that um, to even 900. So what this does is it, set, it shows you the calendar. It shows you on the third-party calendar program. It will show you one month in the past, and um, it will it'll show you the future until you hit this limit right here. Now the reason we have a limit in the first place is because uh, different 
uh, calendar programs will stop downloading the data if there's too many appointments. Uh, for example, Google Calendar uh, has a limit, and I think it was around 900. Once you, um, and it, it would be different based upon your internet speed, but it, uh, as it downloads the appointments, as soon as it hits 900 appointments, it will stop. It will just uh, it will just fail to download it, and it will just give up. Um, so you want to make sure that whatever you have it set to, um, if you have over 900 appointments, that you test to make sure it updates properly. Um, if you, if you are experiencing a problem with this, then we recommend that you actually just switch over because this does your entire calendar. We recommend you just switch over to the calendar filters and just uh, split up your calendar to different uh, filters and then export those out each individually. And that usually reduces the appointments enough to show up on your on your um, third-party program. And then we have the option that you can manage equipment here and you can set up your availability and stuff like that. The availability and business hours is used for the scheduling wizard. We won't be covering that in this tutorial. Um, or we won't also be covering the scheduler. We'll go ahead and let's go to the agenda. The agenda view here, we have it uh, where you can uh, uh, look at your calendar based upon a time frame and see everything that's happening. So you can select it for a day or, or whatever the intervals you want. You can see it there. We also do have the ability to uh, filter by uh, calendar events. You can also create projects uh, from this window as well. I refer to the project tutorial on how that works. And then we have some options here where you can uh, do group operations and you can find missing uh, duplicate appointments. You can change stuff. You can actually map stuff. Uh, so you can uh, click a bunch of uh, of um, appointments and then you can come in here and uh, map a route so if you needed to say to route, route to different locations you can do it from the calendar. Uh, another uh, way of importing the calendar into the program you can also go to settings and do the same thing. You can print this agenda view or you can show cancelled uh, appointments if you want to. And so that's uh, one of the things I don't think we did show how to do that counselor. So under more actions here this does have a, a few more Options and when when the new we're in the new uh, event window and this one has more, so you can view a logbook history of everything that's ever happened with this uh, this event or session. You can generate a contract which is similar to the new event window. You can cancel this event, so if you want to have it flagged as canceled, you can do it here or you can delete it. And if you have uh, if you have created multiple events and you want to delete them all, this is the location where you go to delete all those. You can either delete all the multiple events or just the ones that are in the future. You can also save a credit card number, and so if a customer calls up over the phone and you want to take a credit card number down as collateral, you can save it. This does require a merchant warehouse account. Um, the credit card is saved as merchant warehouse. Um, and then we do have ProSelect integration where you can link um, to a ProSelect album. Um, refer to the ProSelect uh, tutorials on how to do that. So that's a quick overview on how to uh, use your calendar. and. Uh, I'll refer, as I mentioned earlier, to our written tutorials if there's anything that seems that, that uh, looks different than uh, in your program.